take creative plans to follow God's will. When I come to this section, section of Ruth, I feel like that song from, from Fiddler on the Roof, the great Broadway play. Matchmaker, match make me, make me a match. Find me a find, catch me a catch. Naomi hatched this plan to have Ruth just confront Boaz all alone on the threshing floor. She said, go take a bath, use some perfume, put on your best dress, and you go pop the question. Don't let him get away. He's a keeper. Her plan was bold and it was risky, but it worked. So, was Naomi showing a lack of faith by formulating a plan? Or should she have just sat back and said, well, if it's God's will, if God's will it'll happen. If it's not, it won't. I'll just wait and see what happens. Was she showing a lack of faith by planning? She was going to make it happen. And that's a question that still needs answering today. Let me ask you this way. How much help does God need in accomplishing his will? Now, I know what just popped into your mind. None. God can do it himself. Well, before you go straight to that, which is true, by the way, before you go straight to that, there are two extremes when it comes to understanding God's involvement in our lives. On one side, you have deism. <clears throat> That's a belief in a watchmaker God. The view that, that God created the world like a watchmaker, and then he wound it up, and he pushed it off into eternity, and he lets it run itself. In deism, some of the founding fathers were deists. God really isn't involved in our lives. So if we wanted something to happen, we've got to make it happen. And that's wrong. The other extreme is fatalism. That's the belief that everything that happens is already predetermined. There's nothing we can do to change it. There's nothing we can do to fix it. We have no control over what happens. If something is destined to happen, it will happen regardless of what we do. There was an old Quaker in Pennsylvania that held this view that everything that happened was predetermined. One day he was walking down his cellar stairs and he tripped and he tumbled all the way to the bottom. And he stood up and he said, man, I'm, I'm glad that's over with. Because it was going to happen no matter what. Turning on the light or watching my step wouldn't have happened. But the truth lies somewhere between these two extremes. God is interested in every part of our lives. He has the hairs of our head numbered. Some of us he takes less trouble to count because there's not as many of them up there. But he knows how many there are. And by the way, he doesn't count the ones in the hairbrush, so... Just the ones on your head. He knows how many hairs are on our head. He knows how many cells are in our body. And we're not the victims either of blind fate. We aren't just pawns on God's chessboard that he moves about at will. We are responsible human beings. And we have a part in making God's will come about. So the truth is in the middle. We seek God's will. And when God reveals it to us, we work to help our part of it to happen. That having been said, can God accomplish his will if we choose not to participate? Absolutely. But we lose the goodness and the blessing that comes with following God. We need to be like Naomi, making bold plans within God's will. You have a search committee out looking for a pastor. You've got a church at a crossroads waiting for 